Hi, uh, good morning. Um, my name is Martin Now. I work in the Facebook kernel team. Um, first of all, um, I'm not the speaker you're expecting today. Um, the guys who really did this work couldn't make it today, so I'm going to present on their behalf. I happen to work with them closely from the kernel side, so I know enough details to know what I'm talking about, hopefully. Um, and secondly, um, instead of only talking the DDoS, I want to extend the topic a little bit today to also talk about um, our another XDP production use case, which is our L4 load balancer. So since we, all, we already have one uh, DDoS protection talk before, uh, I'm going to switch the topic a little bit to talk about our L4 load balancer first, and then uh, I will talk about our DDoS protection mechanism uh, or framework. Before we begin, I want to recap a little bit uh, how people usually do load balancing on the web traffic. Um, it's pretty common. Uh, the, the end user request come in, it hit our level for load balancer first. What it usually does is uh, you look at the TCP IP header, um, find a five tuple, do the usual sharding or consistent hashing. People usually do it to find the balance to, to find a proxy, which is our level seven load balancer, and then send the end user traffic to it. On the return path, the proxy send respond directly to the end user. It doesn't go through the L follow balancer or shift. Um, so we call it L follow balancer shift. Um, so we use to use the IPVS to do the L follow balancing functionality. We now move to the XDP mechanism um, in order to get better performance and better throughput. So before I, I hope you can see this graph um, well. Um, so before I dive into the details, I want to show some graph and data first on, on the performance uh, we got after move to XDP. So at the, at the bottom graph is the uh, packet per second. Um, so the top line is the machine running, X, running XDP. So the bottom line is are the machine running IPVS. As you can see, um, we can get much better throughput uh, with XDP. Uh, in one case, we can get at most a 10x difference between XDP and IPVS. Um, the, the top graph is plotting the CPU idle. The top line is also uh, plotting the uh, CPU idle percentage of the uh, XDP program or the machine running XDP. Um, as you can see, the bottom lines are the machine running IPVS. If you look at both graphs together, you can see um, the machine running XDP getting much better throughput. At the same time, it also doesn't burn as much CPU as the machine running IPVS. So now I'm going to uh, I'm going to dive in some details what the XDP program doing to to realize the um, L follow balancing functionality is amazingly simple. Um, I can conclude in two two slides. So the first slide is um, so F, almost uh, any BPF program is going to use some map. You know, in our L follow balancer case, we only have two maps. So the first map is a sharding map or consistent hashing map that people usually uh, do for doing uh, low balancing. Um, so the user space program will generate this map based on the proxy, based on the proxy IPs it has to low balance the traffic to. It could be a consistent hashing algorithm or it could be any reasonable sharding algorithm you can come up with. Uh, and the second map is a LLU map. Um, actually, we use it as a cache. Um, I, I will talk about it uh, in a moment. Uh, so when, when, when there's a new TCP connection coming, it means that we got a TCP sync packet. We will first look up the, uh, the sharding map first to figure out uh, which policy it should send to so that you can figure out the policy IP and then send the TCP sync packet to that policy. Uh, at the same time, it will, it will create an entry for that TCP4 
to remember where or which proxy IP it has sent this TCP for to. So when, there's, when the following packet come in for the same TCP for, it can look up the LRU map uh, to figure out where we have sent this TCP for before. So that is to ensure we always send the TCP for to the same proxy machine. Otherwise, if we send it to a different machine, it will get TCP reset, things like that. Um, so next I want to talk about uh, the second part of, the, our, of our XDP program is uh, how, do we really, how, do we, how do we transmit the packet out. So at the first green packet is the packet we got from the uh, end user. And then the XDP program will extend the head of this packet to, so that it has enough head room for us to put in another high pattern to it. Um, the IP header is simply the L4 low balancer IP as the source. The destination is the proxy IP that we have just figured out by looking up the map I just showed you. Um, so you extend, you call BPF, XDP, I just had uh, extend the headroom, encapsulate it in, into another IP header, and then send it out. So that's it, um, it's very simple. Um, you can imagine the, the BPFC code is a couple hundred dice long, and then boom, we get the um, performance improvement I just showed you in the, in the first graph. Uh, so next I want to talk about a job that um, is, the, uh, is the daemon or surface or the framework we build to, uh, to, uh, to do the def DDoS protection. First, I, want to, I also want to start with a graph. Um, so here is a traffic graph that I capture from the L4 low balancer or the shift machine we have in production. Uh, so you can see from time to time we, we, we see significant or major traffic spike. Those are the uh, DOS attack we are getting. So when we, when, when we start um, this job lab project, um, we have a dreamness. We want, we want to do it in, in, in this job lab service. We want to drop the packet as fast as possible without burning a lot of CPU, and uh, we want to drop it as early as possible. We want to drop it at the leg level, or at the driver level, not at the IP stat or at the TCP stat. And other things we want is programmability and flexibility, because uh, we want to react fast. We want to, if someone come up with a uh, better detection or, or dropping strategy, we, we should be able to develop this program and deploy to our whole fleet, uh, whole, whole, whole data center or all data center as, as quickly as possible without a kernel reboot. And um, XTP job uh, can realize all of it and uh, we can drop it at, at hardware limited weight. So the uh, framework is a, is basic, job is basically a uh, daemon running in all of machine. What it does is uh, it takes the BPF program written in C, um, usually written by the security expert, and, um, and then the daemon will compile it at one time by using a C, BCC uh, library. And then we will load it to the kernel, populate the map with, um, with IP address or some packet signature we recognize uh, for the BPF program to map with. Uh, and then we run it in the XDP um, hook in the lake. So the last one I want to talk about is uh, how, how do we piece all the BPF program together in, in our production. I told you we have at least two program we are running in the L4 low balancer already. One is doing the uh, L4 low balancer itself. Another one is, is the job that doing the packet job to do, to do, to, to do the uh, DOS, DDoS protection. Um, but there's only one XDP hook in the, um, the um, NIC driver. So for octagonally, you can only run one program. But, but there's a way to train the program together. Um, 
is in the BPF is called tail call, and you can tail call uh, with the um, program array. So you can popul populate the BPF program array like that. That's one way we are populating it in our production now. So the first BPF program is called XDP dump. It doesn't use. It doesn't always to be there. It, 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 this program will be there if we need to do some debugging. It's like TCP dump. It will, it will dump the packet out. And, uh, and you can imagine the BPF program of the XDP dump is some, if, if it matches something we want to debug, then it will write it out to the perf to run output. And then the user space will process it and then train it like TCP dump format. And then the next, and then when the packet finish, uh, when the XDP um, finish processing this packet, it will go to the next um, BPF program, which is droplet I just talked about, to decide whether it should be dropped, uh, is it a hostile packet or not. If not, uh, then it will pass to the next BPF program, which is our level four load balancer, to decide which proxy uh, we should pass it to next. But if it is a hostile packet, it will be dropped at the droplet already. That's all I have today. Um, questions? Any questions? Uh, okay. Anybody with questions? Can we ask you the same question we asked the previous speaker, Ronnie's question? So why no? Why are you? Uh, why do you need XDP when you can drop in hardware? What's that? <laughs> I'm just going to ask Ronnie's question. Okay. Uh, what what NICs are you using? What, what mic? Which hardware NIC? It's who's ven who's the vendor? I'm not sure. I can tell. You can tell me. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Pe penalty box for you. <laughs> All right. Anybody else has a question or? <laughs> yeah, so uh, are you at what level of packets are you looking? Are you looking at level three, level four data, or just the level two headers? We need for the, it depends on which BPF program you're talking about. If you're talking about the level four load balancer, we have to look at the TCP IP five type of things. So at least at the L4. So uh, one thing I, th I think is really interesting about your, your flow in your XDP programs is that you have that perf introspection level at the beginning with the dump call. Have you thought about taking this a level further where you could use, you could put together a whole bunch of s tracing state as you go through the pipeline and then when you're finished with the XDP program, either returning XDP drop or XDP transmit, emitting a perf event at that point which has all the information, the packet itself, the decision that the XDP program made, and that way you could, you could debug your XDP program using all the, this kind of pseudo introspection mechanism. You mean to save the header passing in, in that sense? Or? I'm saying you make the decision in the XDP program, be it drop or transmit, and then you, you put that in the, in the perf event as well as perhaps some of the packet headers. Because that way you could debug the XDP program if you had this information all in one blob. So the one thing people keep asking about is there's a lack of introspection for XDP programs and I'm thinking perf may be the existing facility that a lot of people can use to debug their XDP programs and I kind of want to think when people thinking about that a little bit. Okay. Take more questions here. Yeah. Just one. Yeah. Okay. We have uh, Suresh Bhogavelli. Uh, oh, uh, name? That's what I said. Suresh <laughs> <laughs> Bhogavelli. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. The previous question, why do I need to use XDP? Why, why can't I just drop the packets on, uh, uh, in the NIC? Uh, one use case may be that, that NICs can do sin cookies. Or can they? Uh, so if I need to know that the sin packet is legit, I may need access to something that is quick that I can do something with. Uh, okay. Not simply for dropping the packets, but actually do that intelligently by figuring out whether the other site is legit or not. That brings the next question. Uh, you said when a thin packet comes in, you create state 
how do you deal with DDoS attacks as, as in floods? Um, can you repeat a second question? When the SYN come in, was that? When you explained your load balancer, you said uh, when the first packet is a SYN packet, you look at LRU to figure out uh, uh, which proxy to send the packet to and create state. Uh, I'm wondering, do you do SYN flood protection before, after, or you don't do that? Uh, how do you deal with uh, uh, SYN floods that may attempt to exhaust your uh, connection state? Um, so we have dropped that before L follow balancer. So hopefully the same flood, the same flood is protected by the droplet already. Oh, that actually sends sin cookies, uh, for example? No. Oh, sync sing, sing cookie, okay, okay. So I think his main point is that the, the LRU table is a potential denial of service vector. Is, 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 is what he's trying to say, like the routing cache used to be in the kernel. Yeah, so um, I do agree right, so, that's, so, that's a valid use case. So um, the, L, the LU is like, um, it ensures the, the sample will all, always go to the same proxy, right? So if there's uh, the same flood case or single key flooding or to, to, to DDoS the LLU, we, we will stop using the LLU and then solely depends on the on a sharding map way. Um, so the consistent hashing, for example, is usually good enough to, put, to, to, to ensure the uh, same end user will go to the same machine. Is the LLU is protecting, uh, protecting us in, in the case that the, the proxy machine may be up and down, and then it will affect maybe 1% or sub 1% of the traffic uh, shipping to another machine. I think something that might be missing is, do you have a so you call it an LRU, therefore, do you have a limit on the size that it can grow to? Yes, LRU has a limited size. Okay. But even un what I'm saying is, um, so on top of the limited size, we also will stop looking at the LRU if we detest the same, same fart. Yeah. We have about five minutes now. Do we want him to sing for five minutes? or? <laughs> or? Uh, uh, actually, I have a question for you, since we have time to kill. Um, what kind of performance do you get with that load balancer, the first set of your slides? Um, I can't talk the exact number. Oh. It's the same. It's like, it's, it's it's like what we have, for the SAMNIC card, I can, yeah. what I'm I can tell it's for the SAMNIC card in, in some case. For example, the same, same front attack case, uh, we can get 10x difference. With the, against what? Something like against IPS. HA proxy or something like that? IPVS. Okay, against IPVS. Okay, any more questions or should we send him to the penalty box? Okay, thanks guys. <laughs>